Coming up in this week's video, I'm going to bring you to the oldest salvage yard in Dublin. We're going to have a wander around and see what secondhand treasure we can get our hands on. And I may even bring you to a posh antique shop as well. Pop the kettle, settle in, and I hope you enjoy this week's video. Okay, so I've just gotten to Max Salvage Warehouse. It's a very quick right hand turn and there's very little parking. And I'm parked. I don't even know if I'm allowed to park here. I'm in the War Memorial, what is the Irish National War Memorial Gardens are down there and I just saw, it's like a little park. I am in a spot, I'm not on a double yellow, but I don't know if I'm supposed to be here. So let's just pray I don't get clamped because I also have the NC team today and we just can't have them two things happening. Now, Max Warehouse is actually Dublin's oldest family run salvage yard. So I just went onto their website to have a little look to get a bit more information on them. And it says, formerly McGovern Salvage Yard, we have been in business since the 1940s, specializing in modern and architectural salvage. We also sell liquidation and surplus stock, such as new doors and windows, sanitary ware, and polished porcelain tiles. It also says that since 1940, when our grandfather, Charles McGovern, took his horse and cart around our streets, Buying and selling rags and scrap metal. The business has since developed into areas including granite, PVC windows, doors and decking. It is definitely a lovely vibe from this place. I arrived pretty early because I get nervous trying to park in town. I absolutely hate parallel parking. I even Google Maps and had a look to see what the parking was like. There is parking outside but there was lots of deliveries and people with vans when I arrived but I did park in that little park that's beside it and I didn't get clamped but you are going to be going at the weekend or at a busy time just to give you a little heads up on the parking. So this place was an absolute treasure trove. There was a mix of new pieces, new pieces that looked old, old pieces. When I first walked in, I went in to the left because there was an abundance of knickknacks. If you're looking for any old school, you know what gave me nostalgia? My mom still has them in her house. The old light sw switches from Irish cottages and um, the little black switches. I was like, oh my God, my mom still has them. So it was great to see that you can actually still get them. There was an abundance of door handles and knobs and so many quirky things, cups, mugs, but everything with a bit of character. So are you going to find something here? So I was thinking to myself, if you are maybe a furniture upcycler or you're looking for something to upcycle furniture wise, you're probably gonna, not going to find much here. But if you are possibly doing some renovations in the house, um, it was very easy to find stuff even though there was stuff everywhere. So the bathroom section was there. I seen a beautiful gold tap for 50 quid. There was old cast iron bathtubs. Some of them could be re-enameled. I didn't actually get the prices on those. Um, there was loads of doors. So doors that you could strip back, repaint, or just keep as is because they had a load of character on them. There was also lots of windows. I seen a beautiful set of French doors. And I was like, they are on my vision board. So lots of doors and windows, things like that. A couple of weeks back, I think it was back in February, you would have seen I went thrifting for a new desk for upstairs in my bedroom and I got a lovely writing desk. I went to the NCBI warehouse out in Ballyferma. Now they had a lot more pieces of furniture for your house, whereas this place is more of a salvage art, so you can pretty much get anything. There was a random section upstairs where there was lots of cooking supplies from old cafes or restaurants. It was like proper industrial stuff. And then he had a section where there was lots of mirrors and there was even an old buggy at one stage. And I was like, I think that could be haunted. <laughs> there is pieces of furniture here though. So it is worth having a little look. But I think if you're looking for a cheap piece of furniture, maybe you're looking for, just for example, my bed frame that I have in my bed is 50 quid. Um, I don't think you're going to find anything like that here. So if you are looking for a cheap piece of furniture to upcycle, yeah, have a look, but don't come with the expectations to find something to kind of upcycle. However, you will find lots of other treasure. 
when it comes to the outdoor section they did have a section out the back that was full of landscapey bits there was uh, materials there was bricks there was beautiful palettes of old bricks and they were just so nice you'll see those in a minute and there was a couple of pots and um, some sleepers things like that now last year myself and Karen we went down to the Kilkenny Architectural Salvage Yard and I found that they were the opposite so they had loads of garden uh, stuff outside um, now they did have like a bigger, they had more land um, but they didn't have as much inside compared to Max warehouse and then the guys here don't have a huge section out the back so it's probably unfair to make a judgement because also the time of year um, or April so some places may not have more garden stuff outside um, I'm sure I can check on the website to see if they do have more garden stuff in stock I remember last year chatting to the guys in Kilkenny salvage yard and they were saying that some they do have another warehouse off site where they store things so I don't know how these businesses manage to store all of this cool stuff and I can only imagine trying to do a stock take in places like this I actually I don't know if you just saw a second ago there was a beautiful fireplace with those tiles on it like I know some people think that's really dated but I love a fireplace that has nice tiles now nice tiles like that one with the cream and the floral some of them can be a bit not so nice but I just think those old fireplaces are beautiful and just add so much character to a room now I've just had an idea let's play a fun game so throughout the course of this video because I have so many clips of different things to see in this video hit pause when you see something that you like take a note of the timestamp so for example if it's 0627 and put it in the comment section with what is your favorite thing because there's so many things in this video um, at least I can click back to the you can click on the timestamp and it brings you to that stamp in the, that time in the video sorry and I can see what it is you had your eye on I think the sailors the little life jacket was really cool as well that you know there's so many um there was like little bicycles there was just so much to see so yeah throughout the course of this video if you see something that you like take a note at a timestamp and comment below and we'll see if people were lusting over the same items
Oh my god, it is the wettest, muckiest day. Oh my god, it feels like seven o'clock at night and it's like 10 a.m. Um, that place was insane. There was too much to look at for me. I was like, what? But today is still young, even though the weather is awful. I think I'm gonna drive over to park my car in the Thomas Street car park and walk up, get a coffee. I'm not caffeinated. There is some like charity shops and charity home shops that are up along Francis Street. Um, so I think we could have a little rummage in there. Um, my hair will be out to here. I also, I didn't buy anything at Max Salvage because they actually, there was a lovely set of gates that was like, oh, they would look nice in the garden, but I didn't bring my measuring tape. I know you can use some measuring tape on your phone, but yeah, I didn't buy anything because I was too, oh my God, this place is amazing. <laughs> but there was lots of, if you are doing a renovation and you're looking for something with a bit of character, they did actually have a new door section where you can actually get new doors. Um, but the older ones, like those older French uh, windows that I seen and double doors, I was just like, oh, they are beautiful. So if you are looking for something with a bit of character or if you're working on an older house and you want to get like, older doors that maybe you want to strip them and keep the character there's a lot of stuff like that so okay i think it's a six minute drive to the other side of town where we can go and have a look at the other charity shops and maybe i'll find an umbrella <laughs> life update i did have to pop in and get an umbrella in deals i think it was three euro it was they knew what they were doing they had an umbrella stand right at the door now totally random but i love walking around mead street thomas street there just be markets but this is somewhere where my mom used to bring me as a kid and a teenager but randomly there's a little grotto beside the church and my mom, anytime we were in town, she would always go in here and she would light a candle. And I wouldn't say we're holy people at all, but one thing we love to do is just light candles for people. And one of my friends has someone close to her in hospital, so I was like, you know what, I'm gonna light a candle. So I couldn't pass it and not pop in. Now, from Thomas Street to Stevens Green, I actually needed to pee. So I came down to Stevens Green, but I also had to collect something in one of the shops. But one of my favorite things to do is look at the art gallery on the top floor. Now the art is spendy, <laughs> but you can check out the details on the artists on the website, but I just love looking at it to get inspiration and seeing up close. So this shop is O'Sullivan's Antiques and this was on my walk back to the car park and it was on Francis Street. Now, the top of Francis Street has gone posh. There is loads of expensive looking antique shops. And of those shops, O'Sullivan's looked the most, how would I say, welcoming. Because does anybody get the imposter syndrome of going into an antique shop and you do not feel like you belong there? But I went into O'Sullivan's um, and this is, you know what, there's no price tags on anything. So even if I won the lotto... I still don't think I could afford to shop here, but I wanted to have a proper look. Tags on the items gave a lot of information. I had like the year, it was all like 1800s, some stuff from the 1700s. The lady actually, there was another um, couple in the shop as I was there and she asked them, were they looking for anything in particular? And then she looked at me and said, hi. <laughs> so... I think she could smell the poverty off me. <laughs> so this was like lovely Bridgerton furniture, the type of stuff you see in, you know, the castles and the country houses, beautiful pieces of furniture. But you know what I actually like about going to the antique shop? So when you go to a museum and you see these lovely pieces of furniture and stuff, there's normally a rope in front of them and you can't like touch them or get close. When you go to the antique shops, you can proper, I don't know, open the drawers and have a look and have an actual rummage. Um, I was very conscious not to knock over anything in this shop. So I kept my camera very close to my chest just in case I knocked anything over because I would probably need a mortgage, another mortgage <laughs> to pay back anything I had broken. And now for my last shop on our little tour around today was the NCBI home on Francis Street. 
Now they do have a factory warehouse in Ballyfermot that has way more stuff. But if you are just floating around the city, definitely pop in. There's not as much in this shop, obviously, because it's a smaller unit compared to the warehouse, but it's definitely worth the rummage. And it was the only place I actually bought something. If a rummage around a secondhand shop and a salvage yard is your thing, then I do have a couple of other videos if you want to check them out. If you're watching from overseas, uh, we don't have the big cool secondhand thrift shops. They're generally much smaller, but what there is, there is, there can be some really cool stuff. And I notice in comparison to when I watch videos of people going like salvage hunting in the UK, some of the stuff here can be quite expensive. And it's definitely not as good as if you were to go to the Brocons in France. But I'll pop links to some other videos where I visited some places to go thrifting. I'll pop them in the description and you can check them out. Also, if you're new and you're enjoying this video so far, hit the subscribe button, say hello in the comment section, and welcome to the community. Here is what I picked up. It's a very, very small haul, but I got this beautiful earthenware pot, and I love the size of this because it's big enough that I can use it as a vase, or I can pop kitchen spoons and things like that into it. I love the cream into brown pottery. I think it's called earthenware if you search it. I know that's quite a broad term because I think it can be in terracotta as well. But this gives me such nostalgia because I feel like we had loads of this at home as a kid. That cream into brown. And there was all like little jugs and even like cups as well. I've seen some pieces on Etsy and they can be quite expensive. The piece I got was eight euro. So I think it was a bargain. But there's no stamp on the base of it. So I don't know who made it or if it's more importantly, if it's worth anything next thrifted bargain was a set of candlestick holders because i've had some pillar candles i think that's what they're called i've had some candles sitting in my drawer because i realized i have nothing to stick them into and i love seeing cozy videos on youtube where they have the candle light and it's always in a little candle holder so i thought these were really pretty i have them in the living room now but i liked the green on them because i think they're going to look really nice in my bedroom so if you saw the video where I was cleaning up the writing desk and I put some new wallpaper in that nook. I think the green will complement the wallpaper but I just have them in the living room for now because I'm gonna have a cozy evening this evening and light my candles. Before I sign off just a quick update for signed copies because the book release date is fast approaching. So I am going to be going to the warehouse April 22nd to sign all of the pre-orders for Eason. So if you place a pre-order with Eason's and they ship internationally, this will be signed, but get your order in before the 22nd of April for a guaranteed signed copy. And I just want to say a massive thank you for the support because I've gotten lots of lovely messages and comments from people saying that they've already placed a pre-order. And I just can't wait to see it on the shelves and I hope that you guys enjoy it and get value from it too. My heart went into this, so thank you so much for the support. Thank mm -hmm. you.